Hey everybody, greetings from the dank basement. I'm Paul, your wicked Uncle Squiddy. How you doing? Hey, I'm not a pipe tobacco reviewer. It's true. I'm a nasal snuff reviewer here on YouTube, and if you have subscribed to my channel, you know that's where my main alternative tobacco focus has been. Yes, I've also talked about Swedish snus, and I've talked about a couple of other tobacco products that do not involve combustion. But I also like to smoke a pipe, and uh, I've been smoking a pipe now regularly for about five years. I had tried back in the 70s, it was a lousy experiment, and I had stayed away from pipe smoking for well over 30 years before coming back to it. Today we're taking a look, oh by the way I have to thank my good friend Mr. Alexander Volkener uh, from Germany who sent me this pipe, isn't this beautiful? This is um, a truly magnificent little pipe. And it's a great smoker. So we're taking a look here at the Solani 660 Silver, which is a Virginia Burley concoction. Now, I cannot show you either the package nor a whole flake of this. This is a flake tobacco, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, the packaging is really weird for pipe tobacco. Um, I've seen vacuum tins, of course, and I've bought plenty of bulk uh, tobaccos. But this is the first tobacco I've ever seen where they don't give a damn about establishing a vacuum in the can. And in the tin, the tin is not vacuum sealed, as I said. There is a uh, plastic seal you have to break open, a little dot. And when you open up the tin, what you have is a uh, cellophane bag, but it's heavy cellophane. It's not like a cigarette wrapper cellophane. It's heavy cellophane that is triple folded at the top at the opening and then sealed with a foil sticker. So there's no vacuum, and the tobacco theoretically could very easily dry out or, you know, whatever, become less pleasant to smoke. But it doesn't. Uh, it really doesn't. But I, I wanted to age it, so a year ago I put 100 grams of it into this canning jar. And what I found when I came back a couple of weeks ago is that the flakes had completely self-destructed. They just sort of fell apart in the jar. Um... I thought Cornell and Deal did a fabulous job with Burley, and in fact they do. But the Burley in this, thank you, Mr. Will, the um, Burley in this is absolutely stellar. It pops with flavor. It's cool burning. It's a really, really nice Burley. Now, in addition to that Burley, the Kentucky fired Burley, you also have some very nice mature red Virginias and even a little bit of bright Virginia or yellow Virginias which give it a little bit of a grass-like edge, and it really sparkles. The flavor sparkles, particularly in the top half of the bowl. You really do get those Virginias. The smoke is relatively chewy. It's fun to play with. You can retrohale this and or French inhale this with very great effect. You guys, I couldn't find a pipe tool this morning to save my life. Here's my new tamper. This is the official Uncle Squinty butter knife tamper. <laughs> I love being blind and disorganized. Yeah, last night, we had huge rains here yesterday. Big thunderstorm, flash flood warning, the whole deal. And last night, my five-year-old roof sprung a leak. And as fate would have it, fate being the cruel mistress that she is, the leak was right above our bed. So we had to sleep in the guest room last night. Neither my wife nor I slept very well. So if I look like hell this morning, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, when you sniff it in the tin, you get the smell of perhaps fig, maybe date, uh, and a little bit of a whiny sort of scent. Smells like fermentation a little bit in the plastic bag. Um, you do not get that fermentation flavor in the smoke itself. Uh, it is just a very solid, very nice smoking, cool burning, and relatively high nicotine Virginia Burley blend. <laughs> Excuse me. Other Virginia Burley blends that you might be familiar with include Stonehaven, the vaunted Stonehaven. Guys, <laughs> I'm not an expert, obviously, but I will tell you this, and I'm certain of it. J.F. Germain, who is also Esoterica, 
takes their brown flake, which in and of itself is a brilliant tobacco, and they age it, and then they repackage it, and they call it Stonehaven. I have smoked a lot of Stonehaven over the past four years. I currently have a 2014 vintage bag of it, eight ounce bag of it, still in my cellar. I'll probably be selling it, because frankly, I was never that impressed. It's very good tobacco, but I don't think it merits the hype. I feel the same way about Hobbit's weed. Uh, it's a fine cherry aromatic, but there's nothing special to it. Not really. Um, you also, you always have to be careful of trendy tobaccos because we are herd animals, all of us. And if somebody that we respect says this tobacco is the absolute shit, you got to try it, we're going to try it and it will eventually become a fad or a legend as appears to have happened with Stonehaven. It's ridiculous. Uh, the way it was explained to me by someone who owns a tobacco shop there it goes. Thank God that heater shut off. It's a little cool here this morning. It's still very damp, so I was running the gas fireplace here, and it finally shut off. The noise is distracting. So, what they do with the Stonehaven, as I understand that the shop buys each bag for about $15. They turn around and sell it for $35, and then within two weeks after they've sold out, because they're purposely limiting the quantities of their releases, uh, if the pipe shops sell out, which they typically do within a couple of hours when the Stonehaven sits, uh, hits the store, hoarders will then buy pounds of it and turn around and two months later start selling it on eBay for as much as $150. In other words, you're paying 10 times more on eBay than what the shop paid for that same quantity. Um, I have seen Stonehaven with a couple of years on it go even higher. And again, why? When you have brilliant Virginia Burleys like the Solani 660. Now, talking about Solani, Solani is the botanical family classification that also includes potatoes, tomatoes, and belladonna, the deadly nightshade plant. So uh, that's what Solani means in Latin. It's nightshade. And Mr. R. Will, I'm not going to try to pronounce his first name, started out with the idea that he was going to make really great aromatics. At this, I think he failed. X Sweet Mystery is not worth the price. It's good. It's fine. But it's not worth the price. Now, that's, that and the black and white are the only other two Solani tobaccos I've tried. I really want to try their aged burley, but it is constantly sold out no matter where you go. It's kind of like Stonehaven. You can't find it. So if I find some of the aged Burley, I certainly will review it because the Burley used in the 660 is wonderful. Virginia's aren't bad either. This is top-notch tobacco, and it is expensive. Retail price on this for a 100-gram tin is about $35, $36. However, if you buy it online, this can be had for $26 or so for a 100-gram tin. So it's not really all that expensive compared to other tinned uh, excellent pipe tobaccos. The presentation of the flakes is beautiful but unusual. In my tin, for instance, my 100 gram tin, I had five very long flakes. And we're talking like this long. Yes, this long. That's how long it is, baby. Um, with a butter knife. Um, very long flakes, but I, as I said, in the jar, and I put them in very gently and everything else. This jar has been treated with tender, loving care. And when I went to open it a couple of weeks ago, it had just shredded out, which, of course, makes rubbing it out easily. Let's talk about that. What's the best way to smoke this tobacco? Uh, what works for me is that I pull off a strip of the flake that's maybe an eighth of an inch wide, and I roll it into a loose spiral, which I put in the bottom of the pipe. That allows a little airflow around the base of the main tobacco load. Then I rub it out pretty thoroughly, dry it for about 15 to 20 minutes at 50% relative humidity, and then just use the three-step method to pack the pipe. I, it works very well. Um, I've had enough of that for now. I'm going to let the pipe go out because the nicotine is quite strong on this. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is like nothing, like smoking steam, 
and ten is you better have a big glass of water handy and have your speed dial set to 911 because you might drop to your knees from it. This is a six, uh, maybe even a seven. Uh, it behaves very well, and here's the biggest plus I have on this tobacco. Actually, one of the biggest pluses is you can't make this stuff give you tongue bite no matter how hard you try. I am an idiot smoker. My cadence is far too fast most of the time. I draw too heavily most of the time because I'm used to having smoked cigarettes, right? So uh, I get this thing just blazing and it will not bite my tongue. You would have to be some kind of idiot on a mission to get this to bite your tongue. Yes, you do get a little tongue tingle from the sugars and the Virginias, I'm not gonna lie. But it's not a full-blown tongue bite, and I can smoke this all day. Now let's talk about smokers. If you're a cigarette smoker trying to transition from the cigarette to the pipe, this is a good one for you. <laughs> the flavor is not cigarette-y at all, but it satisfies in the same way that a cigarette will. The problem with that is, if you are a cigarette smoker, you're going to do this. Okay, you're going to be sitting here smoking your pipe. Let me relight this. Very expensive lighter. I know that all the pipe snobs are going to absolutely love the fact that I'm using this, and good for me. I have owned uh, half a dozen lighters, all of which cost north of $50, and none of them work. So, And I've never tried using a Zippo. I think that's disgusting. I don't want naphthalene juice dripping down that wick and getting into my tobacco. So I've never tried a Zippo. I know Cisco. 77 here here on YouTube, uh, once part of the YouTube pipe community. I don't know if he still is, but he swore by the Zippo. Anyway, getting back to being a cigarette smoker and smoking this pipe tobacco, as I said, it is very comforting for a, a cigarette smoker. The smoke is gentle enough that you can, and be careful of this, you can accidentally inhale this. I was sitting here working at my computer yesterday, I had the pipe clenched, I was typing, and without even thinking, I started breathing the smoke in. Uh, it's not going to uh, hurt to go in, but obviously with this much tar, it's probably not good for your lungs. So be careful of that. If you like to retrohale, this is a fun one to play with. If you like to French inhale, this is a fun one to play with. You can blow smoke rings with this fairly easily, although I can't. Never picked up that knack. Anyway, on the squinty scale where one is this god dang, and five is deliscus, this is a solid five out of five. Please do get some if you can afford it. If you have the patience, give it a year or so of aging. It helps a lot. It makes an excellent tobacco, absolutely supreme. I believe, if I had to guess, and here's where my inexpertise will show, I think this will peak at about four and a half or five years. I don't think this is one you'll need to sell her for a decade. I think the Virginias are already quite mature, as is the Burley, that they put in here. So aging this is not going to take a long time in your cellar. Um, that is my inexpert guess on this. That's it. The Solani 660 Silver Label from the Dank Basement. I'm Paul, your wicked Uncle Squiddy. Thanks for putting up with me.